finally, four years after we started working on this upstairs bathroom, we are back at it and we've made some huge progress in the last couple of days. We've run all of the plumbing for the bath and the shower waste and some new hot and cold water feeds as well. And we've just finished laying a brand new subfloor across the entire room, which is a huge relief because it solves one of the biggest problems that this bathroom has had for the last four years. And so we have all of that to look forward to in this video. But because it's been a long time since we started, and because a lot has happened in this room over the last four years, we thought we'd start with a little bit of a recap, and then we'll talk you through some of the challenges that were facing us for this project. So yes, unbelievably, we actually started work on this bathroom in the winter of 2020. We ripped out the old and tiny pink bathroom suite, knocked down a couple of partition walls to make the room bigger. We don't actually need such a big bathroom, but we were limited by the placement of the windows, so this is what we've ended up with. All the old tiles and cement render were removed from the walls, and during this process we discovered that the two lintels above the windows were rotten on the ends. So we removed them carefully and replaced them with new thicker ones made from oak. And then in the summer of 2021, we framed out some new walls, which will be covered with lath and plaster in the dry areas and moisture resistant plasterboard with tiles in the wet areas. And then we got sidetracked on a number of complex projects for the best part of two years. We picked up the bathroom project again recently when we ran some new hot and cold water feeds up from the ground floor and connected up new plumbing for the grey water and waste. And now we're ready to press on and hopefully get this bathroom completed in the not too distant future. But as usual, it's not going to be 100% straightforward. That's... I mean, it's all very rough at the moment, but that's fine. At least we're just together, okay. okay. Day one of the bathroom project. Well, it's not really day one, is it? Because we've done a lot of work in here, but just many years ago. <laughs> okay, day one of this sprint. <laughs> um, the bathroom has a couple of really big problems that we need to solve. One is the, the floor levels and subfloor composition and plumbing within. That and sounds like more than one problem. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and then the other one is the windows, the window surrounds and somehow adding some insulation to this single skin. But that comes later. We're starting with the subfloor. And the reason it's a problem, where I'm standing, and this used to be the bathroom that we ripped out that wasn't original to the house. So it was added in the 1990s. What they've done here is they've taken out the timber joists they poured two concrete beams and then they poured the slab. And the concrete beams are kind of interlocked to each other and go onto the stone wall there and this stone wall. And then they poured the rest of it in situ. But what it means is the, the two interlocking beams are really thick, um, bigger than the size of the joists that were in this floor. They're maybe 20 centimeters or something. Yeah, they, they're maybe quite a bit chunky. More even and we couldn't underneath run the plumbing under that beam otherwise we'd had to drop the ceiling a lot further and the ceiling height would have been silly so when we did the plumbing from underneath we bought all of it up in this slab section and then we need to run some of it to its final destination so this side is fine so we have the hot and cold incoming water feeds we have the gray water pipe for the sink and then we have the soil pipe. They're all exactly where the toilet's gonna go, the sink's gonna go. On the other side though, where the bath and the shower are, when we brought the pipes up, we just brought them up in existing holes in the floor, nowhere near where they actually need to be. So we have to work out how we're gonna get them from those positions to where they need to be at the right height so that the whole floor can have a, another screed over the top of it to bring all the inconsistencies up. But let me just show you some of the issues with that on the other side of the room. So these are the two pieces of waste that we put in from underneath for the shower and for the bathtub. But the shower drain is actually gonna be way over there. 
and the bath drain needs to be here somewhere. So this is this is a cardboard aided design again <laughs> for our bathtub, um, and it has a central drain hole but it has a flexi so it can actually be anywhere kind of in this space just not where the feet go and so all we need to do is run this effectively make sure that this piece the end piece is at the right height for the top of our subfloor similarly over here this shower drain has to get to the right height the challenge today is to fix these temporarily in place so that we can cement in the, all the holes, fill in all the holes, because when we come and do a slab, we don't want it all just falling down underneath. Oh, do we not want that? I don't want that. No, Particularly... My nice wine appreciation area. No, exactly. Thank you. <laughs> so the flexi is quite long. I mean, <laughs> Incredibly really long. long. So if we aim for somewhere between where the feet are going to be and this side of the bathtub, That'll get us the shortest run to our hole in the floor. And check this out. It's got an integrated um, trap. trap to it, as does the shower. Okay. So that's where the stone wall is. Yeah, just because I want to try and get these feet onto the stone wall rather than onto the timber joists. Yeah, that's a good idea. Anywhere though. Anywhere around I mean, here. This, these can all move, They right? can, yeah. Should we make a mark on the OSB as to where this is going to go? Like we could. Pencil around it so that Have we... Have you moved it back so that the feet are on the wall? No. Because there's going to be a like a shelf at the back there, right? Yeah. So that's way on. Way, Remember, way uh, on. So it needs to come away from the wall a bit to allow for plaster and... Okay. Yeah. So that is still way on. Still on the wall? On the wall. Okay. And is the tap going to fit here? Well, it's I mean, this bath can go more this way because uh, the wall ends at the outer edge of this tape. Okay. So this could come up all the way to the edge of this OSB. So you said it needs to be quite quite close to the bathtub, right? Um, it doesn't have to be that close, but. Okay. So there's plenty of space. There's plenty of space, there. yes. If we the imagine answer. that the plaster comes down to the yeah, yeah, edge yeah. or just there's on plenty. the OSB. Cool. That's there. it. Exactly. Put a big X something. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Perfect. Now let's have a look at heights. This is just so that we can remove <laughs> our cardboard and then put the wall. Very rough. Ah, but it's close enough. Yeah. Oh, there we go. Okay, good. We are plumbed. So this side is right, but mm -hmm. this one needs to go... Just down a little. A little bit more, touch. I mean, it's hitting the front bar of both sides, it's, it's hitting it... Yeah, that's a bit better. Like that? Perfect. I mean, there's a bit of play in it, but... Yeah, but that's fine. Like that. Yep, perfect. Yep. Plus a meter on each end. Four meters wide, this room. Yep. Jeepers. If we bring them all up in a around about this same area, that should work, shouldn't it? Yeah, exactly. You want, yeah, if you stand on that there. Yeah, it's more easy. That'll do. 
like that? No. Okay. So can you explain what we are doing here? Because this is a step that <laughs> I would have, have missed. Yeah, um, these pipes, these two, and also these two, you're going to get cemented into the floor. And this roll of pipe we've had sitting out now, outbuildings, for some time. And so just to make sure that there's no little holes or manufacturing defects, uh, we're just going to test that there are no leaks before we put the first slab down because the last thing you want is to <laughs> put all your new floor down and then find that you have a leak in your pipes because that would not be good. That would be bad. So this device allows us to pump in a load of water into the an open-ended pipe effectively by blocking at one end, chucking this on, pumping it in. There's a pressure valve on here, you go away for half an hour. If it holds the pressure, you're good to go. Am I right in thinking you can do this with air as well, not water? You can. But it's easier to see if you've got a water leak. Yeah, exactly. Good hand action. Okay, we're pressurised to five bar. Time for a break. People say we never have any bloopers, so... Um... It's because we just put them in the show. <laughs> So, of course, I was incorrect suggesting that we would go and have a break because <laughs> it's much more efficient to do something else whilst you're waiting for your leak-proof pressure test thing to uh, be leak-proof. So whilst we wait for that, we're going to put some water down the grey waste pipe that we put in earlier in the video because those are also going to be cemented into the floor. Okay, so... I have some tissue paper up here. I imagine that this is a splash yeah, just <laughs> rather run, than a leak. Run your finger under the join. Yeah, no worries. Yep. Then okay, we'll go and have a look downstairs. Quickly run downstairs. Any leaks? Nope. Excellent. So this tells me we have no leaks, and a finger test along the pipe run also no leaks. One day that'll be the sound of me using the bathroom. <laughs> Not like that. <laughs> <laughs> So that there is where I want it. Okay, that's, that's ideal. Plenty, I mean, it doesn't even need that much, but. No, no, that's fine. That's perfect around here as well. Good. There you go. Okay, just to that. Okay, we've got all of our water pipes in. They're all tested, no leaks. All the waste pipe is in, the shower fitting, and the end for the bath to connect to later on. And that means that we are now ready to get the subfloor down in here. And I don't think we've talked about our solution for that yet. So now seems like a good time to do that. And then tomorrow we'll have a full day of actually getting that installed. So subfloor. Yeah, so earlier I said that the floor levels and the different floor constructions are a bit of a challenge. So we've come up with what we think is the best solution given all the different constraints of what we're trying to achieve, the materials we have available, our skills and knowledge, etc. And that is, we're going to put a lacquer and lime subfloor layer, much like we did downstairs, for completely different reasons, though, to what we did downstairs. The biggest reason up here is where we have the OSB subfloor is on timber joists. It's going to have a bathtub on top of it. And I think we're fine, but I was like, if we can lighten the the weight of the subfloor, that would be excellent. And so lacquer does that, it's a really light material, much, much lighter than like a sand screed. And the second thing is we're gonna have underfloor heating in here, so we need some insulation underneath the underfloor heating pipes. And again, lacquer provides that insulation. So we get the two things for one. And we also already have the materials left over from downstairs. We do have to go and buy some more lime, but we thought it was just the best use of all the all the different criteria in one 
in one go. And then on top of the lacquer layer is going to go a proper sand and lime screed that the underfloor heating pipes go in. And that on top of that then goes our tanking waterproof layer. So the only complication that remained after we decided, oh, let's do the lacquer, is there's some gaps <laughs> around where the two different subfloors or floors meet. So the concrete slab and the OSB, there's a bit of a gap there and the lacquer will just fall straight through. So we have some old membrane that we used when we built the kitchen shed. We're just going to use that over the whole OSB section to cover the boards, cover the join between the two and also just go up the walls again to just stop anything falling down downstairs. It's probably not the most traditional technique, nor the <laughs> most common technique, um, but it's going to serve the purpose. We have the materials. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to, yeah, I think normally you would kind of shutter from below, fill in your screed, whatever. This is just so much easier. So whilst this is going to look a little bit like a waterproof membrane, that is not what it is designed for in this context. It is actually a waterproof membrane, but normally used on roofs. We are going to be doing a proper waterproofing tanking system for the whole wet area, which is going to be like a wet room. Um, we're planning to use a system called Schluter. I think that's how it's pronounced. They have a whole range of products that we've managed to track down here in Portugal. We're going to supplement that possibly with some weather stuff as well, but we will get to that in a future video. There will be the whole waterproofing tanking separation thing to do. And then lots more work to do after that as well. But we're gonna get this in now and then be ready to start the floor tomorrow. There we go. Unconventional, <laughs> but effective, maybe. Sticky balls. <laughs> Tell you what, I'm going to get my steps in today. Look at you with all your clobber on. I'm ready. Oh, I need some glasses as well. Okay. All right, I'll go and get you some more. Let the madness begin. <laughs>
Are you admiring your masterpiece? <laughs> Reminding myself of uh, how physical it is, which I'd forgotten from the last time we did one of these floors. And I'm glad it's one of the last ones we have to do. And it was only half a day. Yeah, I know, and I'm exhausted. <laughs> <laughs> but very happy it's done. I'll be happier when I can walk on it, but one step closer. So is there anything that you wanted to share, discuss, yeah, reveal, so there was, anything? There's one thing which for the eagle-eyed, um, you may have noticed we used HL5, so hydraulic lime, uh, not NHL, natural hydraulic lime. And the reason is, a, this floor doesn't need to be breathable or moisture permeable because it has a concrete slab under half of it and timber joists on it. It is facing the stone wall, but it's on the first floor, so it's not as big of a deal. And number two, since we did the limecrete floors downstairs, um, I've learned that the, this Lekka slab and the top slab actually aren't what give the breathability to a limecrete floor. It's the first layer which has got the loose lacquer balls. And the advice now out there is you can use cement if you want. We would still have used lime, but we probably wouldn't have used NHL. We just would have used HL. It's much more affordable. It's like half the price. So yeah, I know there'll be some questions of why. Why did we use HL and not NHL? And that's the reasons why. Could have saved us a whole load of money and time in sourcing materials for downstairs had we known that in advance. And I'm happy that we still used lime because it's a better environmental product, i.e. it doesn't use as much energy to produce, but we would have used HL if we'd known uh, when we were doing the lime creek floor downstairs. Anyway, enough about the lime. The floor looks excellent. We've got about a week's drying time before we can do the next step. Our underfloor heating is on order, so we've got to find something to do in between when this dries and being able to put the next slab on. So we'll, we'll work out what that is, and then uh, we'll do it, and then we'll show you. <laughs> <laughs> That's kind of how it works. <laughs> so this is where I've been standing awkwardly throughout the last few minutes while Kylie's been talking. I just wanted to prove that I'm not standing on our recently laid floor. I'm just leaning through a hole in the wall. Anyway, that is it for today. That is it for this project, or for this part of this project. We've got lots more bathroom renovation stuff to come. We'll see you in the next one. Bye for now. Bye-bye. Happy? Mm. Good. Done. Starting to look like a room. Oof, those are big words.